everyone. The Book of Clarence is out and there is so much to talk about with this film. The thing that struck me about the movie has nothing to do with the actual film. There are a lot of people making assumptions about the Book of Clarence based purely on advertising, the trailer, and other media reactions from people who might not have actually seen the movie, yet have seen reviews, titles, blurbs, other images, or whatever that I see floating around that don't actually reflect what's in the film itself. It should be mentioned that I don't think a review can be done of this film without talking about the story of Jesus because it is essentially what the film is about with layers of comedy, romance, social conflict, family drama, oppression, crime, and religion. So that out of the way, let's get to the review. The Book of Clarence is a modern historical drama with comedic overtones and some urban flair that follows the life of a man named Clarence during the last month of Jesus's life. It's not meant to be a historically accurate film, and it does these two really interesting things. One, it maintains the accepted narrative of Jesus's life in the Christian religion, and it's actually pretty respectful of his character as a whole within the film. And two, it sets up Thomas or doubting Thomas as a metaphor for explaining how doubt is critical to achieving true belief. The film does this by splitting Thomas into two characters. Thomas, who has unwavering faith in Jesus and his identical twin Clarence, who has doubt that transforms into faith throughout the film. It's a unique and fascinating take on the story of Doubting Thomas. The Book of Clarence is written and directed by James Samuel and stars Lakeith Stanfield, one of my favorite actors, as Clarence, the lovable, if not misguided guy who's trying to find his way in life. And Lakeith also plays Thomas, being an identical twin, and the devout apostle of Jesus. In addition, the film features R.J. Clyer as Elijah, Clarence's friend and sidekick, Anna Diop as Verena, his love interest, and Omar Sy as Barabbas, his protector. There were also some great performances by Alfred Woodward, James McAvoy, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Nicholas Pinoke. Clarence struggles to find his purpose and to prove that he is not a nobody, but with only 30 days to pay a debt or die, he's desperate to raise some fast cash to stay alive, get the girl and show everybody that they are wrong about him. However, Clarence's schemes, including pretending to be a messiah to con money out of people, they go sideways, and he finds himself on the losing end of a disagreement with the Roman Empire because he starts changing during his time as pretending to be a messiah. But there is so much more to Clarence's story. Any Christian who looks at this movie poster and watches the trailer and makes a judgment about the film without seeing the movie is missing out on a very Christian positive film. I left the theater feeling good and hopeful compared to how I felt when I watched The Shift, a preachy, heavy-handed sci-fi retelling of the trials of Job. Despite the comedy and the irreverent jokes and the jabs at religious leaders who are out to make a quick buck by preying on people's faith, the Book of Clarence is probably one of the most solidly Christian movies that I've actually seen in a really long time. The comedy in the film serves a larger purpose that kind of lightens the tone. It makes it into a story that I think will also attract younger audiences and get them thinking a little differently about Christianity and in a more positive way. The comedy 
is smart and is threaded throughout the film, but not all of the jokes will land for everyone because they are written for a wide breadth of viewers. You'll find some funny, but you won't find others funny. And you might not even know something as a joke until someone else in the theater starts laughing. The film also uses modern language and ideas to create relevant connections between our time and Clarence's time. In this way, the film examines the power and catalyst for religious faith, where it comes from, and how it changes you. It's also a great modern lens into critiquing the people who use another person's faith or hope to acquire their own power and riches at the expense of the other person. Now, Clarence starts out as a man who only believes in knowledge and the things that he can see and touch. And he thinks the things that Jesus can do are really just tricks, which is actually a legitimate perspective. He thinks it's all a con and decides he'll be a Messiah too to raise the money he needs to save his life. It gives Clarence a unique story and opportunity for growth as he learns that faith isn't something that another person can give to you. It's something that grows inside you. And I really loved how they handled Clarence's transition from knowledge to faith because he takes his knowledge into the world and combines it with faith in something larger than himself. And these two elements turn into his own belief in God. In that change, Clarence finds the strength of character to stand against the Romans and not turn in Jesus or anyone else to save his own life. As a result, those inner qualities that he knew he had inside become externalized for others to see. And it's a beautiful moment and it's a really beautiful message in the film. I think it's also impossible to review the film without acknowledging that Jerusalem is in the Middle East, that people in that region have darker toned skin, that the region is under Roman occupation and how race, even back then, played into the politics and social issues of the day. Then, given the modern perspective that we take in the film and the political issues and the social issues, they telescope into our modern times, creating this important and poignant critique of religion and oppression today without being disrespectful of the past. I highly recommend this film. The acting was good. The script was strong. The story was really interesting and complex. And I loved how a fictional story fits so very well into a well-known historical narrative that I don't know, most people in the in the world probably know, uh, even if they're not Christian, that's impressive. The Book of Clarence isn't meant to be a historically accurate movie because it's a metaphor, but it is a good and positive film. And it's also a lot of fun. It's kind of funny. And I think that is a great element. There are some references to sex and drugs in the film, but it's minor and they're pretty light. I think The Book of Clarence is a fine film for the family and that most people who give it a chance will probably enjoy it. Again, they might not understand all of the jokes or some of the underlying context, but they're going to get most of it. And that's my take on the book of Clarence. I enjoyed it a lot. And I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I would because I don't usually go see religious films. And now I want to know what you think. What did you think when you watched it? Did you watch it yet? Was it what you expected? What did you like or hate about the film? I would love to know. So definitely drop me a note in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, if you found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. 
and subscribe for more videos because I've got more reviews coming out soon and I can't wait to chat with you about them. All right, everybody. Until then, happy viewing and I will see you guys later. Bye.